So here's an interesting statistic for you. According to this data that I'm looking at, the average software engineer tenure at a company is around 16 months, which is around 1.333333 years. So according to this data set of 103,000 software developers, 45% of software developers have an average tenure of one to two years, with 69% not lasting even two years at their job. Okay, so what is going on here? Why are software developers quitting their jobs so freaking quickly? Well, the answer is, is because coding is dead. It's just not worth it to work the jobs anymore. I'm just kidding, that is not the reason. Let's dive in and look at sort of why this is happening. I can tell this from personal experience, by the way, I didn't even last at my software engineering job for one year. I left to be a digital nomad very, very quickly. So in this video, we'll take a look at what are the causes of this super high software engineering turnover and why you should also switch jobs this often if you're a software engineer let's talk about it so there's a pretty simple reason for this and if we're just thinking about what is the thing that software engineers are mostly looking for at their job why are you working your job is it because you really love the company or the culture is it because you have so much fun with your co-workers is it because you just really love the code base they're working on no you work your job because they pay you a salary you want to get paid a salary for the work that you do otherwise you wouldn't really work that job as much as you're probably not telling your company that and throughout your career what are you mostly looking for are you looking for interesting work or like amazing managers well no you're looking for as high of a salary as possible and it just turns out and there's a lot of research on this is that the best way for any employees to increase their salary is actually to switch their jobs as often as possible. Well, not quite as often as possible, but reasonably often. So now I'm gonna show to you why that is and why this is especially true if you're a software engineer. So the first thing to understand is that if you're staying at the same company for a long period of time, that one company has all the control over your salary. And sure, there's gonna be raises, but on average, looking at this data here, for example, the average employee can expect a measly 3% raise every single year. And if you're a very, very high performer, like you work super, super hard, you might get like 4.5% apparently. And when we consider that the inflation rate is usually like 2%, and of course, recent years has been much higher than that, you're barely beating inflation if you're just getting these average raises. If you look at the average salary bump that you can get when you switch jobs it can be between 10 and 20 percent every time you switch jobs so literally if you were to change your job every two years for a decade you would increase your pay by a hundred percent whereas if you stay at the same company it's definitely not going to be nearly as much and obviously there might be other reasons, like you just might not like the company, you might be looking for a new opportunity, you might be looking for a new way to improve your skills, to learn something new at the new company, you might be wanting to go from a small company to a big company or from a big company to a startup because that might match your preferences much better, but mainly it's like, let's be honest, it's because of salaries. So why do you get so much more pay when you switch jobs relative to just getting raises? Well, really, if we think about this, let's say you are an excellent software engineer, you're getting paid $100,000 a year, and you get an offer from your current employer that you can get a raise of 5% to $105,000 a year. Well, for another company who's looking at you, and by the way, after you have some experience, like even after I got a couple of months of experience as a software engineer, I started getting a bunch of messages on LinkedIn from recruiters who are trying to poach me to go to their companies. Well, for some other company, to convince you to work for them, obviously they're going to have to offer more than what your current employer is offering because otherwise it's just much easier usually for you to stay at your current company. So they're gonna have to offer you that incentive to incentivize you to work for them. And the reason why this has been especially true in the software engineering industry is that at least before this current terrible job market, there was a lot of competition for engineers. Every company just wanted to hire the best engineers just so that their competitors 
couldn't get those same engineers. So this led to so much competition in the job offers between employers, which is great for you as an engineer because you're getting these companies to essentially compete for you, provided you're good and provided you have shown that you have experience and things like this. So this is really the reason why if you're a software engineer, you should always be sort of looking around like different opportunities. You should always be interviewing. You should always be keeping your interview skills sharp because that is gonna be the fastest way for you to increase your salary as fast as possible. Now, there is a sweet spot to this. If you do this too quickly, and especially at your first job, at least the advice that I always got is that at your first job, you might wanna stay a bit longer just to show other companies that you're not a complete job hopper because if they can see that you're switching jobs every two months, then well, they're not really gonna to wanna to hire you because they're like, well, he's just gonna to go to another company in two months. And that is why the sweet spot seems to be, at least according to this data, switching jobs every 1.33 years. But there's a counter argument to this. I know that some people are gonna say this, especially your employers are going to say this. Oh, but you don't have any loyalty. Shouldn't you be loyal to the same company for a long time? And here's what I have to say about that. The thing here is, is that your employer has no loyalty to you. Now they're gonna tell you, our company is like a family. We take care of you as an employee. We offer you competitive benefits and whatever nonsense. But the thing is, is that the second that you either don't perform or that they just don't need you anymore. You might be performing fine, but the company is just like, yeah, we kind of don't need as many engineers anymore. They are going to fire you and they are not going to feel bad about it. The thing is, if they are not gonna have any loyalty to you, then why should you have any loyalty to them? And I can say this now that I'm no longer working at the company, but a lot of software engineers, they're gonna be afraid to say this because you don't really wanna say this. You wanna make it seem like you're loyal to them. But in reality, the only person that you should be loyal to is yourself. This is the best advice that I always got when I was in the corporate world. You need to be ruthless. The company is absolutely going to use you if you let them. They're gonna tell you, you should work as hard as possible. You're gonna get the best raise, but the best raise is still going to be much lower than what you could get at another company. So if you're allowing them to convince you to work super, super hard for them just for this measly raise, then really they are using you. So you should not feel bad if you use them for what they can give you, the skills that they can give you, the learning opportunities, obviously the salary as well. But really the second that you get a better opportunity, you're no longer really growing at that company, you should leave and keep moving up the ladder. Now, how do you do this properly? Like I said, don't leave immediately, especially at your first job. The more experience you have, the more competency you have shown and established, the better your resume, the more leeway you have this because the more experience you have, the better you are, the more companies are gonna be wanting you to work for them. So I'm not saying just completely be careless, don't work hard, absolutely work super, super hard in any job you are, really impress everyone, really establish a great reputation for yourself because that also helps you if you do get that offer, you can sort of go to your company like, so I got this offer of 120K and I'm sort of considering it. If they really like you, they might just come back like, okay, we'll increase your salary to 125K for you to stay. It's always a good idea, absolutely, to work as hard as possible, establish as good a reputation as possible, and just be as competent as possible because that's gonna always, in the long run, give you the best compensation and the best job security. But what I am saying is that you should always be keeping your eyes open to other opportunities. When you're working for a company, it's not like you're married to that company. You should always sort of be dating around, having like some side chicks here and there, sort of like entertaining different offers. That is not illegal. Your company is gonna to try to shame you to not do that, but this is a ruthless world. Remember, they have no loyalty to you, so you have no obligation to have any loyalty to them. It's a transaction. You're providing them employment, and in return, they're paying you for that employment. You should always be applying. You should always be interviewing. Always be keeping your interview skills up to date. By the way, if you're looking to learn interview skills, one of the big kinds of skills you're gonna to need to learn is something called data structures and algorithms. Now I have a full program on this if you wanna learn them, and I'm gonna give you a discount code right there if you wanna use it. So go through that program, learn the skills, and keep them up to date throughout so that you can always be fresh for any interview opportunities that come your way. Obviously, this is a tough market in the job market, and I'm not saying that it's gonna be easy. It's certainly not as easy to do this, to just hop around the different jobs as it used to be, but this is just a mindset that you wanna have in the corporate world. For most of you, the first problem is gonna be is just getting your first job. How can you land that first job? And the best way for you to do that is to build as many projects 
as possible. And if you are struggling with building projects, you don't know how to build projects, I just made this video right here where I go through my project building process, how I built resume projects. So I think this video is gonna be super, super helpful to you. So go watch that video next, and I'll see you in the next one.